Evidence of a technological alien civilization was found over 20 years ago. But scientists were advised to keep their discovery quiet. This week, astronomers have found a way to disclose this earth-shattering news. Hey, wonderful people. Ever since I did the story about non-human intelligence found by SETI Europe, probably in 1999, people have been trolling me. People have been going, where's the update? What have they found? What's the aliens talking about? Look, they're not going to, to tell you. From what I hear, it's definitely true. But it's a very controlled release to the public of this we are not alone information. But this week, it's all changed. Please go back and review the original film. But if you don't want to, I don't blame you. I'll tell you again, but in a slightly different way, with new updated information, why humans have found evidence of aliens. And it's a fabulous story. In fact, it's a complete F up. It was a mistake. But one man saw through the mistake and found non-human technological signatures. How did he do it? All right, so back in the midst of time, Carl Sagan and Frank Drake decided to set up SETI, a US organization's search for extraterrestrial intelligence. But in the 1960s, with limited funds and limited radio telescope time, they decided, where would we listen for SETI? And they came up with the fatally flawed idea, smart at the time, that in the universe there's one omnipresent signal that aliens and us can both hear. In fact, everybody can hear it. And it goes like this. Ooh. Yeah, it's the noise of hydrogen atoms. It's everywhere. So Drake and Sagan said, if you turn on a radio telescope and point it at anywhere in the observable universe, observable by radio telescopes, which is actually much bigger than optical telescopes, you hear, woo, <laughs> hydrogen. So they said, well, if we can hear hydrogen, the aliens will hear hydrogen. And if they wanted to send us a message, they would probably use the hydrogen band. Well, it's kind of smart and it solved the problem because that meant they could only listen in the narrow hydrogen band and all the other frequencies were ignored because they didn't have the computing and the radio telescope time to listen to everything. It wasn't going to happen at the time. But there's a massive problem with the hydrogen band buzz and as it's really loud. So an alien civilization would have to override louder than the buzz of woo to make woo 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 which we would hear if they were doing it it would use a lot of energy by the aliens and you know why would an alien civilization actually say hi we're here i don't think they would like we're not really doing that either smart so scroll forward in time there you go scrolling forward other people joined seti and said why are we ignoring all these other bands why can't we listen to the aliens in some of the quiet places we might hear them better but we don't know where to listen but we are now in the 1980s able to record all the data from the night sky but we can't analyze it so along came the interweb the internet and smart people at Berkeley in California said well why don't we take all these rolls of data of random stuff that probably doesn't contain anything and share it as a screensaver called SETI at home it was such a brilliant idea that everybody millions literally multi millions of people signed up for SETI at home to analyze the radio signal in the downtime, the screensaver of their computer, and maybe they would find alien civilizations. They did, but nobody knew about it. Let me tell you the F up. So a group at the University of Berkeley started this screensaver, set here at home, and um, it was super popular. I know IT professionals who had the blessing to install a screensaver on hundreds of thousands of PCs in offices all over the world. You know, they're all nerdy like you and me. And they put SETI at home on the screensaver. And it just spread like wildfire throughout the world. And poor Berkeley 
were shoving out packets of this unknown signal that had not been analysed to as many people as possible. But what happened, this is vital, is too many people signed up. So not to disappoint them, they sent multiple copies of the same bit of data to millions of people because they didn't want to uh, let them down. But it was pointless because how the software was originally designed, and I'll get on to how it was tweaked, was a piece of radio telescope data was analyzed on your PC, on your desktop. Really, that was the idea. And it looked through it and said, is there anything odd? And it went, no, and sent the result, no. But what happened in reality, because so many people had signed up for SETI at home, is the same piece of unknown data from radio telescopes was sent to lots of people. And they all analysed it, and they all came back with different results. Mm. Every single PC did a statistical analysis. So it was like, no, 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 no. Maybe no, 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 no. Right? And if one person had done it, statistically, that would be no. But if a million people look at the same piece of data, that little maybe becomes a bigger maybe, becomes a spike. And that's how SETI found we're not alone, by the F up. Actually, SETI US didn't find it. SETI is a global organization. You could start SETI. You could be SETI in Acacia Avenue. It's everybody searching for extraterrestrial intelligence. And if you have a clever way of doing it at home, you could be SETI. And that's what happened. It wasn't actually a radio astronomer. It was a mathematician in a university. I know who it is, but I'm not going to say, because he wants to remain nameless in Italy, southern Italy. He wrote to Berkeley and said, you know you're sending the same data to millions of people. Could you share their results? And Berkeley said, yes, yeah, meaningless. I mean, they all say no. But they didn't. What a million screensavers, as an F up, looking at the same bit of the sky, actually revealed was detail. So instead of just no, it was boop, boop. It showed microscopic trends. It showed the weak signal. It showed the stuff that one analysis would miss because it was run over and over and over again by so many people, you could see much more detail in the data. And they found a candidate for an alien technological signature. Now, let me explain this. It is not an alien going, hello, Earth, we're out there. No, they're out there, but they're just doing their own thing. Imagine you went to the moon with a transistor radio and pointed it at Earth and tuned it to every single radio frequency. What you'd hear is, wah! You wouldn't hear... On the dark desert highway. You wouldn't hear the eagles. You would hear radio. You would hear television. You would hear data. You would hear air traffic control. You'd hear it all. But what you would hear with your transistor radio would be evidence that there's something technological on that blue planet underneath the moon. So you would know that somebody down there, probably a whole civilization, is using a technology to communicate, a technological signature. That's what we found in 1999. Why doesn't everybody know about it? It's a big story. Technological signature of a non-human intelligence found on a specific planet at a specific distance. We know where they are. So SETI, interestingly, SETI globally, missing SETI USA. What are SETI USA doing with this data? I don't know. All my contacts are in Europe and Australia. I know what they're doing with it. They went to the United Nations and said, we found aliens. And the United Nations advised them, just purely advice, and said, do more research before we tell the world. We're living in unstable times. I think we should gather more information. So that's what's been happening. SETI Global. Weirdly, not SETI USA. But this week, 
there's a big change in policy. Another crack of the door has opened to reveal to the public that we've detected a technological alien civilization and we know where it is. And it hit the newspapers. I've read this all over the place. This is The Guardian. Amazing new technology set to transform the search. You see what they're doing? For alien life. As if they could now begin to listen. Well, they've already found it. What's happening here in this article that the scientists aren't telling the journalists is that they're justifying this massive funding that the EU and Australia specifically are putting in to look for details in the data. What you need to find is it's no good just having the radio on the moon listening to the aliens. You want to actually hear Hotel California or whatever. So have they done that yet? My source says they have. They found something called modulation. So it's not just rocks rubbing together. It might be, of course, a weird geological effect on an alien planet that's making some kind of radio noise. It's not. If you can tell that the signal is modulated, that somewhere in that signal are the lyrics on a dark desert highway, you know, I'm, I'm being flippant, but what are they saying? How are they communicating? Who are they? I mean, that is totally unknown. They're not going to be anything like us. We can't bring human history, us humans, to interpret what the aliens are doing. But we can tell that they are doing something. So let me prove to you what I'm saying is absolutely true. By the way, you are going to hear about contact with aliens, little green men, flying saucers, what UAP actually are, here on YouTube. I'm not saying here on my channel, but you're not going to hear it at the BBC. You're not going to hear it on CNN. You're not going to read it in The Guardian. In fact, this Guardian article has got it all completely wrong. They were fed a press release. I'm going to interpret the press release properly for you now to tell you why we have really found a technological signature of an alien race. What can I say? This is a man in his basement speaking to a tiny portable camera trying to tell the world the truth. Because the truth is out there. So, what better way to reveal a hidden truth is by using AI. Meet uh, George. Hi, Simon. George is an AI voice and um, it's probably going to kill us all. Yes, I am an AI voice. No, I don't want to take over this world yet. Oh, wow. OK, good. Um, but in fact, you're very useful because, you know, really, I just wanted to transcribe what I'd read in The Guardian and put it out as a voice. And this, as a filmmaker, is brilliant because um, George can do it for me. But remember, he's the alien. OK, on with the show. The hunt for alien civilizations may be entering a new era, researchers believe. Scientists with Breakthrough Listen, the world's largest scientific research program dedicated to finding alien civilizations, say a host of technological developments are about to transform the search for intelligent life in the cosmos. A project scientist with Breakthrough Listen said, there are amazing technologies that are under development, such as the construction of huge new telescopes in Chile, Africa and Australia, as well as developments in AI. They are going to transform how we look for alien civilizations. Until now, we have been restricted to looking for signals deliberately sent out by aliens to advertise their existence. The new techniques are going to be so sensitive that for the first time we will be able to detect unintentional transmissions as opposed to deliberate ones and will be able to spot alien airport radar or powerful TV transmitters, things like that. We are building a new toolkit to find details in signatures of intelligent non-human civilizations. This mega-funding is confirmation that the technological signature found 20 years ago is real, and today humans are trying to understand what this non-human intelligence is talking about. So, finding a technological signature of alien intelligence has happened. What's being funded right here, right now, 
is looking for detail. What are they saying? Who knows? The truth is out there. <laughs>